know what I'm talking about. Because we're all old, right? But there are those who quickly run by and those who quickly judge what good is being speedy if the spirit doesn't budge. If the spirit doesn't budge. If the spirit doesn't budge. What good is being speedy if the spirit doesn't budge? Yeah. So yes. I am disabled, cause I'm able to say this When you see me come, I'm a whole human Not parts that I may miss And I won't hide all my shortcomings If yours also wear For humanity, not ability Is the handicap we share your art Handicap we share Stephen Fricker, and we are here to present to you songs for the heart, the mind, and the funny room. And I'm so happy to see you all came out on such a beautiful day. You know, we've been having a lot of up and down with the weather, and so I'm glad you chose to come here instead of going to have fun elsewhere. So <laughs> I hope that we can entertain you, uh, and I hope that you are in a singing mood. You know, we're all socially distanced, and some of us are wearing masks does not prevent you from singing. So I urge you to sing along and sing out loud. Now, during this concert, I'm gonna be doing most original songs, songs that I have written, but there are going to be a few covers. And during the course of the, of the concert, I have some riddles for you. And if you can guess the answer to the riddles, you win a prize, okay? So, uh, this next song, is an old traditional Irish song that I wrote. Uh, but you can sing on it, even though you don't know it, because it's very, very easy. It's called, When Women Run the World. When women finally run the world, the world will run much better. There won't be any lines to the ladies' room in theaters. Cause architects will realize we take a week, we longer we'll stand up for our need to sit when women run the world. Your part, stand up for the need to sit when women run the world. Oh, boxing wars and football will be outlawed right away and injuring each other will be thankfully passe. The only legal way to beat the crap out of each other when women run the world, I'm round the two of pillow fights when women run the world. Money will be spent on bread and schools and art and more, and gardens bloom where there were bombs and toxic spills before. Not a penny will be spent to anybody's detriment. Hooray, we'll all go shopping when women run the world. Just nurturing and gentleness when women run the world. Just nurturing and gentleness when women run the world. 
normal speeds and road rage will expire. Accessories for autos won't include humongous tires. We'll stop in us directions whenever we are lost. This finger is for wearing with women run the world. <laughs> so raise your glasses, toast the lasses, storm the back of bars, make violence extinct, stamp out stinky cigars. Equal pay for equal work, a cleaner world for all, bonded for everyone, and women run the world. Oh, I was thinking maybe there should be a theme or a few things for the uh, for the show. So um, this, the first uh, theme is going to be family. Now I want to tell you a little story. I have a very very long-standing relationship with a friend of mine, and we were having dinner, and uh, at her house, and she had invited another friend of hers who I did not know to dinner, and we had a very lovely conversation during dinner. Well, this friend of hers gave me a gift, and the gift was a beautiful image that I would like to give back to you. And that image is of a beautiful quarter moon. And what that quarter moon means is no matter how much you love someone, no matter how well you think you know someone, you will never know the complete story of that person. Because if life unfolds as it should, we will probably go before our children and our parents went before us. And I made the serious mistake of never talking to my parents about what life was like when they were young before I came along. So I don't want to make um, a similar mistake with my daughter, so uh, I wrote her this song. Now. This song is called Quarter Moon. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Um, Quarter Moon, again, to realize that we never really get to hear or see or experience the incredible tragedies, the triumphs, the, uh, the whole life that make up a person, right? Thank you, Stephen. The song is for my daughter. Well, 
Look at them stars. Some are sons that died long ago. I the lights all oh, shining on. Just as my love will follow wherever you go. So when you're old, I won't be there to see how your story will end and where. But whenever I leave, it will be too soon to me. Watch his tune, but believe me, you'll appreciate it. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm really glad. I, I call it an, an old Chinese folk song, Tuning. 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 So this next song is um, I wrote for another friend of mine. And uh, she's my oldest friendship, my longest friendship. We, we've known each other since we were eight. So that's like, what, 20 years now? So um, anyway, she has always been a risk taker. She's always been very feisty and uh, you know, a little bit on the reckless side. And I, on the other hand, um, grew up very timid and shy and uh, very cautious. And I like to be safe and secure. Well, as we grew older, as we grew older, it kind of flipped because uh, you know, I entered the profession of music, which is a pretty big risk. Uh, but I figured, you know, you only live once. And on the other hand, she became more and more cautious. So I decided I was going to write her a song. Um, when I was 15 years old, I got my first recording contract. And my parents, you know, were kind of nervous about that because we also went on tour. We were two little girls, two little 15-year-old girls. And um, so, she, they were pretty nervous about it, but I said, you know, if I'm going to do it, I, I have to do it now. I have no responsibilities except for school, and uh, you know, this is something that I want to do. So my mother and my father said, okay, well, um, go for it. And so when I went to make my first album, <clears throat> I called it Leap of Faith, because I believed, I truly believed that you should, you know, Go for it and close your eyes, hold your nose, jump into the deep end. But that was many years ago. And now I'm writing songs with titles like this. Push comes to shove. <laughs> Daughter, this must be a mistake. Never wanna know. 
transform space, the thing of all that's at stake. Life is one big place. Might as well feel it all. You get one chance, one recording contract when I was 15 years old and my parents were you know as supportive as they could be but of course they were worried about me so my mother said okay we will help you we will sign the contract because I was too young to sign it myself and you go off on tour but you know music is not a very secure profession and you're going to need how many of you have told your children that I mean let's say somebody wants to be a rodeo rider I don't know you know but my parents said, you need plan B. You need to have something that you can fall back on because music is so risky. And I said, well, that makes a lot of sense. I should go to college. And my other love, besides music, is art. So I said, I know, I'll go to art school. <laughs> and be a painter, because painting is so much more secure than music, right? So. Um, so I went to art school in San Francisco and fell in love with that city. So I did promise you some cover songs, so I think you're gonna recognize this one. Anybody in the world who wants to see it. So, my friend Karen 
has a father. And her father's name is Jules. And he retired in, when he was 65 years old. But when he turned 70, he was diagnosed with cancer. And he had a bucket list too. And one of the things on his bucket list was to be able to write music and you know, maybe even sing some of his compositions. Well, Jules was not a lyricist. He, he wrote many, many beautiful melodies, but he couldn't write the lyrics for some reason. So he was taking piano lessons from this woman, and the and piano teacher said, you know what, Jules? You should write a song a day. That's a big challenge. So over the course of the many years that he took lessons, he ended up writing 500 songs, melodies actually, but no lyrics. So his birthday was coming up and he said to his daughter, Karen, would you please write some lyrics to some of my tunes? And Karen, who was a beautiful singer, uh, but she's not a songwriter, she said, I, I really can't, I, I'm not a lyricist, but I do have lots of songwriter friends. And so she put out to her networks, hey, can anybody write lyrics to my dad's tunes? And much to her surprise and shock and awe, 21 of her friends, her songwriter friends said, hey, I'll try, you know, and I was one of them. And so what Karen did is she gave each one of us a tune of Jules. And if you couldn't manage to write a lyric for some reason, she could give you another one. But we were not allowed to choose the tune. So I listened to my tune, or his tune, that was given to me, several times, trying to figure out what this song meant to me. And what it did mean to me is that I have a bucket list too. And one of the things that are at the very, very top of my bucket list was to have lots and lots of children around me because I absolutely adore children. So um, we had a daughter and that's it. So I said to her, you know, you, can't, you really can't say these kinds of things to your, your children, can you? Hey, would you give me some grandchildren, please, and hurry up? <laughs> no, you can't really do that. But I, I found a way to, uh, to ask her, you know, um, how many children would you like to have? Making me a grandmother. And she said, she said, I'm never having children. I don't even like children. <laughs> oh, dagger to my heart. Well, I thought, all right. I guess I'll, uh... I'm never going to be a grandmother. But then one day, we were celebrating my birthday, and she brought out a cake. And on the cake said, congratulations, Grandma and Granddad. Oh, wow. She was pregnant. And so uh, this song is really meant to say, you know, never say never. Your fondest dreams can come true in ways that you can never imagine. So um, am I playing in this? <laughs> so this lyric, uh, this uh, tune was written by Jules Jacobs, and I wrote the words to it. Here's the first riddle, the first contest. When I was writing these lyrics, I stole a line from a very famous poet. You have to find the line that I stole and tell me who that poet is, okay? And I have all faith in this crowd that someone's gonna get it right, okay? So here we go. It's called, You Never Know. I've been growing old. 
and I also have always had a terrible sense of direction. So, there's a song about all that. It's called Oh No. from your very own house to the corner of your very own street. Turn right, turn left, walk two blocks more, not lost on your very own feet. My house is around here somewhere. I don't know where we are. Oh no, I gotta tie a ball of string to the door to unravel when I Did you get the image? Oh, yeah. <laughs> A two mile long ball of string. <laughs> Maybe some of you can relate to this next verse as well. I just left the room to go downstairs. I'm crossing to the kitchen door. I know I wanted something here. What was it and what was it for? <laughs> Good grief, was my mother right? Something about my head. Oh, I know I'd lose it if I wasn't screwed on tight. That's what what's her name said. <laughs> this is the bridge, right? Okay. No, I don't. But um, I'll, 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 don't come to me. <laughs> to this part, right? Oh, right, but not right. Come back. But by then it'll be too late. Well, okay, I, I have learned to compensate. I'm sure all of us who have, you know, occasional memory loss or even, you know, continuous memory loss, we have learned to compensate, right? We use mnemonic devices. I, I used to call them pneumatic devices, but that was wrong. I'm also losing nouns, but adjectives. Um, so, this is how I compensate. I am writing myself notes on these pieces of paper, all the things I don't want to forget. Long wear shoes, get the kid from school. No, I haven't forgotten her yet. <laughs> okay, twice. Now, where did I put those papers? Had them right here in my hand. Oh no, now what will I do for the rest of the day? Well, I guess nothing I had planned. Okay, well, um, you know, I should go to a neurologist. I did. Okay, so Stephen says I did go to a neurologist, had an exam. He said there is nothing wrong with your head. However, what's inside it is uh, shrinking. <laughs> Well, since I don't have any plans today, I guess I'll just go back to bed. You know, my pajamas on. <laughs> Did I brush my teeth? Did I ever finish the song? I don't know how to end the song. Hmm. Stephen, you end it. his musical called A Little Night Music. And uh, it, uh, I think it had a, became a number one hit for Judy Collins. And she actually won a Grammy for it. Uh, it is a, a song of anger and regret. On the ground, you've been made. 
There ought to be clouds Just when I'd stopped Opening doors Finally knowing The one that I wanted was yours Making my entrance again With my Lucky 
me, I'm still thinking, but I'm thinking that I'm sinking. So what does this all signify? Well, and this is your part. So we'll write down my bells. Don't wanna be a superwoman, baby. Don't wanna set the world on fire. Just wanna have some sanity, maybe. Some satisfaction once in a while. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Then that's your part. Okay? But you don't have to feel bad because your part is so small as compared to the one that you know. But think of your part as reproduction. Your part is very small, but very significant and very important. Okay? So here we go. Don't want to be a superwoman. Don't want to be a one-woman quartet. Cause this juggling ain't enjoyment. This spouse house employment. And kids will be the death of me yet. Then I got married and life got more hairy Trying to please my significant other The sexy, exciting, always look inviting He'll never need to turn to another But baby's got the colic and I'm too tired to frolic Though I tried to be the consummate wife It's lovely once to make but I'm gonna hate I got a habit for the rest of my life So I tell my sweetie, don't wanna be a superwoman, baby Don't wanna set the world on fire Just wanna have some sanity, maybe Some satisfaction once in a while, man Don't wanna be a superwoman Don't wanna be a one-woman quartet Cause the trembling ain't enjoyment This past house employment Yet. Well, every night I come home, I put the dinner right on. Thank heaven for my microwave. Commercials say the floor should shine, but I can't even see mine. The dirty laundry gets in the way. I buy the groceries weekly, all the sinks are leaky. I gotta paint the kitchen someday. Yet entertaining, I'm barely maintaining. She died of dust balls, they'll say so. I tell my house, don't wanna be a superwoman, baby. Don't wanna set the world on fire. Sanity, just wanna have some sanity, maybe. Some satisfaction once in a while. Don't wanna be a superwoman, don't want to be a one woman for dead. Cause the juggling ain't enjoyment, the spouse has employment. Children are a blessing, except when they are messing, or screaming, teenagers are sick. I don't bake them apple pies, I see the suffering in their eyes. I'm not the kind of mom they would pick. My temper's combustible, I'm no Claire Huxtable. I'm feeling guilty down to my shoes. They'd love to be swamping, me for Mary Poppins. They think they got nothing to lose, so I tell my kids, don't wanna be a superwoman, baby. Don't wanna set the world on fire. Just wanna have some sanity, maybe. Some satisfaction once in a while. Don't wanna be a superwoman. Don't wanna be a one-woman quartet. Cross the street, I need enjoyment. The spouse has employment. And kids will be the death of me, yeah. I'm supposed to exercise, sleep eight hours, socialize, feed the dog before he expires, meditate, accommodate, support my favorite candidate, don't forget to rotate the tigers, stop and smell the roses, wipe the dirty noses, read a book to stimulate my mind, any more stimulation, it'll be mental mutilation, that I'll really be running behind, so I tell myself, don't
let's go back to the theme of family. Now, let's think about the older definition of family. I think most of us think of it as a nuclear family, mother, father, sister, brother, and some uncles, grandparents, right? Well, over the past several decades, this has kind of changed, hasn't it? Right? There's all different kinds of families, all different sizes and colors and shapes and configurations. So it seems like we have to expand the definition of family. So one thing that most, if not all, families have in common is kids. Maybe, but maybe not. Okay, what do most families have in common? What makes a family? Love. There you go, love. Love makes a family. So um, please help me sing it and I will I'll teach you your part when it comes up. Gets tuned. So this song is included on um, a, a CD of mine that I call Love Abides. And I made it for babies. So uh, they're all gentle, soft, quiet songs. Uh, it's called Love Abides, Gentle Songs for Gentle Children. And, um, and I also included it in another one, another CD of mine. But, um, Here we are, defining in a new way, family.
Monte. But I have thank yous I have to make before we do our parting song. First and foremost, I want to thank the Landmark Theater and especially Kelly Renz Bruno. This is the fifth time we've appeared here, four times with concerts and one time showing my film, which is over there, by the way. <laughs> Um, I also want to thank Sean, who is the TD, the technical director. How about a great big hand for Sean? And I also want to give a big thank you to Brian back there on Sal. How about a big hand for Brian? Thank you, Brian. Because if you like the way we sound, you can thank him. If you don't like the way we sound, blame us. And on the camera, somewhere, is Dante. Where is Where's Dante? He is, uh, oh, there you are. He is uh, filming this for the live streaming, and then later on, I'm gonna put it up on YouTube. So, this would not even be possible. Isn't this an amazing place? Yes. Right there? Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> wonderful resource. So I wanna invite you all to join me at the CD table. Do you even know what a CD is anymore? Yes. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't bring my cassette. <laughs> yes. But anyway, yeah. we do, we do. Those are old, yeah. Well, there are my million sellers over there. I have a million of them in my cellar. So please help me get rid of them. Uh, and I have uh, four CDs, right? For adults and five for children and families. I have two books and a film and uh, just all kinds of things. No t-shirts. But anyway, we'd like to close with a very peaceful lullaby. And usually we close an adult show with this song because our adult shows are usually at night. And so we would we like to send our audience home peacefully, calmly, happily. So we'd like to close with the lullaby. And so feel free to take a nap. That lulls you to sleep. I have all every afternoon. Um, okay, so here is the last riddle, the last chance to win a prize. The music was written by a very famous composer. You have to guess who that composer is. And Nancy, you can't do it again, okay, because <laughs> you've already won. And the lyrics are written by a man from the UK named Bill Caddick. And the song is called John O' Dreams, which in the UK, uh, this is a boatman who will send you off to sleep uh, peacefully. Kind of comparable to our Sandman. Okay, so, um, so go ahead, close your eyes. Take a nap. Just don't snore. And if you do, the key is in F sharp? F? Key's in F, so please snore in F. Oh, you know what? I forgot to thank you. <laughs> the most important people of all for coming out on this beautiful day and spending an hour with us. I really appreciate it. Please sign my mailing list. You'll get notice of other shows that I'll be doing. And also, you'll, uh, if you want a, a copy of the recording, I can send out, a, out as well. So here's John and Dreams.
anybody into that room? Who was the composer? The very famous composer of the music. Nobody recognizes it. Okay, Nancy. Do you know? You don't know either. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. No. Tchaikovsky. And Bill Cabot wrote the lyrics. We want to thank you so, so much for coming out. Thank you.